Let's begin. In Star Bear Taxi, you must deliver passengers to their desired destination, whilst on a time limit. You do this by picking them up in your spaceship. To fly the spaceship, you use tilt controls with one move controller. This control scheme is a bit fiddly, and I never felt 100% at ease with it. You do gradually get better, but frustration does still occur, especially if you mess up and the ship flies behind you. Regaining control in these moments can be a bit troublesome, but should only happen when you first start learning for controls. To make the ship go up, you simply hold the T button. If you want it to go down, you let go of the button and let gravity take control. After picking up a passenger and dropping them off in their circle, you receive points. If their destination is off screen, you can look at an arrow that guides you in its direction, which is a great help considering every second in this game matters. You add more time by picking up new passengers. As time goes by, enemies start to appear such as mines that pop up and move, these require some quite tricky spaceship manoeuvres to pass through them safely. If you do bump into one, seconds will be taken from your time limit. Another enemy type is raccoons that fire homing missiles that you must dodge. If you collide with one, you will lose some seconds from your time limit. Another type of raccoon also appears that is in spaceships that has a magnet attached to it. If you get close to them, they will start removing your hard-earned points. The enemies seem to spawn randomly, which makes each playthrough different, but there were moments when it came across as a bit unfair, as so many was attacking at once. As well as picking up normal passengers, some passengers do require different things to be done. I'm not sure what each of these are actually called, as the game doesn't tell you. In fact, it doesn't even have a screen that tells you the scoring system. One special passenger is a honey bear that actually connects to your spaceship by a bit of rope. The bear swings all over the place, which does have an effect on your ship's handling especially if he bumps into you. To complete his journey, you must first fly through all the honeypots that appear. Once all of them have been collected, you drop him off in a ring like the normal passengers. Another special passenger comes in the form of a wrecking ball. You must use the wrecking ball to destroy all the yellow blocks on screen. This wrecking ball also destroys some of the enemies, so you will want to keep an eye out for it when the screen is flooded with enemies. The wind sound effect does sound quite cool, especially when the spaceship passes very close to your face. The depth is amazing when it's so close and will likely make you flinch. A magnet passenger allows you to pick up drivers that are casually flying below you. You must then drop them off in a warp hull. You have to do this about three times to get your point reward. Throughout the stage, golden eggs appear randomly that when collected, release birds. These birds give you some bonus points when you hit into them with the spaceship, or you can also collect them by hitting them with your remote. As these birds are quite small, a lot of the time it does feel more like luck if you hit one, due to the finicky controls. The game comes with three modes. The first is basically your normal mode, which contains everything I've just described. The second mode is basically the same, but you only get one life. Taking damage from any enemy will result in a game over screen. It's certainly the hardcore mode. The final mode is almost a boss-like level, where you must navigate in between balls with spikes to collect honey pots. You don't need to fully collide with the honey pots to collect them, which allows for a bit easier navigation. Strangely, the game only keeps track of one score across all three modes. So if you get a score in the normal mode and then beat it in the boss-like mode, it will be replaced. I found some modes to be easier than others, so I don't see much point in returning to the harder ones when attempting a new high score. Right now, I think there is an issue with the game's trophies, as they are not appearing on PSN, which is strange considering I did earn some when I first started playing the game. The quality is decent for such a cheap game. The animations and overall style is very well done. It certainly has a lot of charm to it, but I just don't see many people coming back to it time and time again due to its fiddly controls. The problem is, if they wasn't a bit tricky, it would be an incredibly easy game and wouldn't offer any challenge. So the finicky controls really are necessary, but overall, the fun is hurt due to frustrating moments that can still occur even after a lot of practice. You will still feel some sense of accomplishment though, when improving on your navigation skills. The fact that your best score is tied to each game mode really removes the incentive to get better in each one. It is a bit of a shame. For a game that is all about replayability, it's a bit unfortunate that it doesn't try its best to tempt you into returning. The game is very cheap though, so it still might be worth taking a quick look if you want to kill an hour or so.
this game is only $4.99, so it might be worth taking a quick look. It's a decent price for what it has to offer, but I'm sure some gamers won't give it much time due to its control method. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more PlayStation VR content.